Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about different properties of discrete Fourier transform. So basically, there are nine important properties of discrete Fourier transform, and the first property is linearity property. Second property is periodicity property. Third one is circular time shift property. Fourth one is circular frequency shift property. Fifth one is conjugate property. Sixth one is circular convolution property we discussed convolution property that is linear convolution property in z transform similarly in discrete fourier transform we have circular convolution property why it is called circular convolution property and what is the need of finding circular convolution in discrete fourier transform that we will discuss in our upcoming lecture seventh one is circular correlation property eighth number is multiplication property ninth one is parseval's theorem okay so basically in z transform we have discussed about convolution property of z transform and convolution property of z transform states that convolution of two discrete time signal in time domain is always equal to multiplication in frequency domain in the same way in dft also circular convolution property states that convolution of two discrete time sequence in time domain is always equal to multiplication in frequency domain and the eighth number is multiplication property it states that multiplication of two discrete time sequence in time domain is equal to convolution in frequency domain so we will discuss each and every property one by one with proof so let us start with the linearity property of discrete fourier transform So the first property is linearity property. So the linearity property states that if DFT of x1 n is x1 k, we always need to remember that time domain sequence are always written in lower case and frequency domain representation are always done in upper case. So small x is the notation for time domain sequence always. And capital X is the notation for frequency domain representation. And DFT of x two n is x two k. Then a one x one n plus a two x two n DFT will be. A one x one k plus a two x two k, where a one and a two are any arbitrary constants. So, if in semester examination this particular property is asked for two marks question, then you need to only write these two statements. So, this is a two marks question. So, this is a solution of two marks question. Okay, now if in semester examination the proof has been asked, then we need to prove the linearity property. So in the proof, the first statement is always the formula of the discrete Fourier transform. So we know DFT of any discrete time signal x of n is always equal to summation n is equal to zero to n minus one x of n. e to the power minus j 2 pi k n upon capital n and this is my x of k my frequency domain representation or you can say the dft of the sequence x of n now i can write dft of x1 n will be summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x1 n e to the power minus j 2 pi k n upon capital n and i can write it is x1 k dft of x2 n will be summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x2 n e to the power minus j 2 pi k n 
upon capital N and it is x2 k. Similarly, dft of a1 x1 n plus a2 x2 n can be written as summation n is equal to 0 to capital N minus 1 a1 x1 n plus a2 x2 n whole into e to the power minus j 2 pi k n upon capital N. Now this can be written as n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 a1 x1 n e to the power minus j 2 pi k n upon capital N plus summation n is equal to 0 to capital N minus 1 a2 x2 n e to the power minus j 2 pi k n upon capital N. Now as a1 and a2 are constants they can be taken out of the summation. So I can write a1 summation n is equal to 0 to capital N minus 1 x1 n e to the power minus j 2 pi k n upon capital N plus a2 summation n is equal to 0 to capital N minus 1 x2 n e to the power minus j 2 pi k n upon capital N. Now as we discussed already this particular DFT and this particular DFT for x1 n and x2 n. So this will be x1 k and this will be x2 k. So finally I can write a1 capital x1 k plus a2 capital x2 k. Hence it is proved. So this is how we can prove the linearity property of discrete Fourier transform.